So in this uh, use of the web EJS, what I'm trying to do is uh, I will run you through a simple way of using the web EGS to create your own customized games. So uh, let me just go on. Uh... Okay, so in this presentation, I will try to blend it up with some demonstrations. Uh. Okay, then we will showcase how you can develop in-house resources which are interactive. And then uh, the example that I'm going to use is I'm going to use AI to help you to change the, the game. Okay, so uh, in, in this presentation, you will learn how to leverage existing code library. Uh, these are some of the things that I will run through. In case I did not run through them, then you can raise it up later as a Q&A. Okay. So the, the idea here is not to show you how to make a simulation from brand new, but how you can use existing uh, templates. Huh? We can do a web EJS. Uh, web EJS. EJS stands for Easy JavaScript Simulation. So in this particular workshop that I run uh, with the professors, the, with the creators of the web EJS tool, um, we created, we, we got 30 officers to come and, and learn. Uh, and then we created about 28 interactive resources of which um, they are all ready for SLS deployment. So you can actually use this keyword or use this QR code. So I already paste into the chat in case you have not received it. So you just click on the link, then it should bring you to this particular page. All right. So in this particular page, in every uh, interactive page, uh, you will find that there's this fourth icon here called the web EGS icon. So just click on it. Okay. And then uh, it will launch the editor. Okay. And I'm going to go uh, to the web now. I'm going to bring up my browser. So um, you can see sometimes, let me orientate you. Uh. So sometimes you may see that there's this particular icon that you can click. So you click on it, you'll run the interactive. If you want to keep a copy and put it in your hard disk, this is the button to click. If you also want to download it and put it in SLS, this is also the button to click. But if you are just looking for the embed code, then you can copy this to embed into SLS. And then this is the web EJS. So you just click on it. I'm going to show you how you can click on this button. It will launch a new page. Okay, it will look for all the web EJS editor and then it will look for the Singapore one, whichever that's available to you. Okay, the next thing you need to do is you need to see that, uh, again, let me orientate you to the web EJS interface. So here is where you can do all your uh, editing. This is the preview. So I would uh, recommend that you always come here. First thing you need to do is you need to click on this live uh, model. So in the live model, you can see that you can actually play the game. And then you can drag, you know, you can uh, check whether the code is uh, working or not. So two plus three equals to five. So the moment you click on it, then- uh, Five is the be... product of two plus three. So there'll be all this uh, log that is done already. So what makes my sharing a little bit different from the other uh, uh, showcase is maybe you can think of it that way that uh, my showcase will allow you to immediately bring this back to your own subject. Uh, whereas maybe the other sharing may be a little bit harder because you need a vendor to help you to, to make the, the customization. So let me show you how you can uh, come here and, and make all the necessary changes. So. Once you once you're like okay, quite happy with this interactive. The next thing you need to do is you come to this thing called a model. Okay. So you need to read like, or you need to read, read, and then you see that these are all the variables. Okay. So it could be very daunting to read. Uh, so let me just orientate you. Uh, you can see that this thing called these are called variables, these are called the names of the variable, right? So in this particular answer string, uh, so you can actually uh copy this, you do a control A, control C and copy it. There is something like, uh, because you notice that in this existing, in this existing game, uh, you, you can see this is four plus six, right? So four plus six uh, is this one, okay, four plus six. So this is the catch answer array. So the first time it is two plus three, the next time is four plus six. So this whole thing is the, 
catch array which is appearing here. So you need to be a little bit more uh, detective like, like you need to be able to see and then okay, these are the key variables. So you copy this, you paste it inside ChatGPT first. Okay, then you copy this. Okay, these are the five, six, seven, eight. These are like the options, lah. Oh, six, uh, five, seven, four. You will notice this is ran, this is shuffled. It shuffle means you that like, you take a deck of cards. There are four cards now. Then you just put your hands together and you shuffle the cards. So in computing terms, there's also this term called shuffling. So essentially, it just reposition the five. Six, uh, four and seven in in a systematic in a random manner like you will shuffle, so there will be no repeats, there will be no overlaps. So copy this into ChatGPT. Okay, so to make another line, press uh Shift Enter. Okay, so you need to explain to ChatGPT uh what you are doing. So for example, uh this is called the answer string array. Okay, so this is answer string array. This is catch string array. All right, then you tell ChatGPT what you want. For example, I want uh, okay. So okay, I'm going to take a take a take a chance and ask the audience. Ah, uh, y'all have any subject y'all want to try? Not like I don't know. Uh, any. Any idea? If not, then I just do a math one because I, I'm quite familiar with mathematics. Anyone? Going once? Going twice? Okay, if not, then I will let just... So this is an existing game about addition. So maybe say I want... Uh, okay, I ask the GPT, uh, create the uh, same... You know, this and this. Okay. But for the subject of uh, mathematics, uh, maybe say uh, primary, uh, lower primary, then uh, maybe say for a uh, subtraction. Okay. Uh, create the similar. Uh, arrays. These are called arrays. Uh. Arrays are like uh, this is answer string array 0. This is answer string array 1. So these are all stored inside the same uh, array. Uh. So without knowing a lot about computation and coding, so you just come to ChatGPT, you just ask something like this. Okay, so I want subtraction. Okay. Uh, of uh, maybe say single digits or something like that. So you, you can you can specify uh, maybe say resulting in uh, no uh, negative negative values. Okay. So you can just prompt what you want and then you see what does the AI give it give you. Lah. Okay. So okay, it's coming out with something sensible. So it appears that AI can easily give us something like this. So I will copy this. Uh, okay, I'll copy this. I will paste it inside here. So be careful when you're pasting. So answer string array. Answer string array. Okay, answer string array, paste it here. So control A, control V to paste. Okay. Then if there's no error, then the preview will still show up. Let me go to the slides and just show you la. Okay. Okay, so this is the fourth icon that you click. Then it will redirect you to the server. You click either you select this button or you click on this button to go to the server. Then it will look it will look like this. Then you're supposed to click on the live mode, right? Okay, then there are all these uh answers here. Okay. So you look for clues and then you ask ChatGPT how to give you the correct answers. Then like what I did, I prompted it. So I wanted to modify this to maybe say become addition. Just now I was trying to do something different on the fly. So it didn't work out very well. I couldn't get the correct, uh, I couldn't get GPT to give me the correct output, which was a subtraction option. And then, the, and then it will come up with all these options for me to paste in. 
So I want, so you can prompt GPT something like this. So modify this to suit for primary six. So this is a sample. So you give it the sample. So copy the, the string that is in the sample. Okay. And then this is the, this is the catch array. And then this is the answer string array. Correct. Paste this inside ChatGPT. Then with some luck and some effort, uh, you will see that GPT can give me something uh, sensible. So in this case, originally it was a multiplication. So uh, two times three, that then six is the first correct answer. So four times six, the first correct answer is 24. So the first answer, the trick is the first answer is always the correct one, then followed by three distractors. First answer is correct, then followed by three distractors. So GPT, when I did it, uh, when I prepared for the uh, session, I was able to get GPT to give me the correct answer, which is two plus three answers five. Then these are the distractors. Four plus six answer is 10. Then these are the distractors and so on. Then I just copy this inside here, which I tried to do it uh, interactively and live, but I couldn't get the output that I like to see. So I revert to the uh, presentation. Uh. Okay. So then you will see that you just copy this button here. This button here is to help to copy the code. But just now in ChatGPT, they, they collapse the two code together. Okay, so you have to be careful. Uh. Also, somehow when I did it, uh, when I prepared for the workshop, it was able to give me very nice. So you just click on this copy code. But when I did it on the fly just now, it collapsed the two code together as a single uh, response. So you just have to take all of these subtleties. Then I'll paste in the answers. Okay, I'll paste the answers inside here. Correct or not? Because these are the options over here. Okay, and like uh, magic like that, nah, you click on the play button, then you can, you can play on the game already. Okay. You can play on the game and then you can drag it around, which I just now I tried to show you. So you paste the new data from answer and capture results uh, that GPT give you. And then you test it by clicking on the play because this is already in the live model mode. So you can see on, on the live mode. Okay. Okay, now I think okay, I think I can I think I can just walk you through like, in the interest of time. Uh. So there's this button here, red color one. Then you, there is a download package. When you download this, then it will come up with a name for you to rename it. If you do not like to rename it, then just click on the download button. Okay. And then uh, you come to SLS, you just select the upload button here. Okay. And then you drop the file inside here. I'm assuming all of us have experience using SLS. So this would not be too difficult. Lah. Basically, you're looking for the pencil clip icon. And then you choose the upload option. Okay, and then you test it. So try not to use WOG because in my experience, WOG usually you will end up having some uh, buggy behavior. So always use SSOE or your personal machine. Okay, when you're testing interactives. Okay, so uh, in the not in so in summary, uh, that there's this thing later. I will click and and give it to you. So I showed, I tried to show a simplified process. That means taking an existing model and then you look at the, the, demonst the demonstration I gave you. It was very easy to customize. Basically, we are changing from one that is a multiplication uh, interactive game to one that is on addition, okay? Using GPT to help you, lah, okay? So I demonstrated how you can do this by simply changing the variable. Because this, that particular, simulation or interactive is already pre-made for the very purpose of allowing uh, officers to just very quickly make the edits. Lah. Okay, so you can change it to, I assume, present past tense and, and stuff like that. Okay, So customize the user interface. So uh, I did not show you this, but uh, it is possible to change the image. So you maybe say you didn't like the the penguin you didn't like the eskimo house you know the you can actually upload the new images and then replace it okay so when you replace the images i suggest you use the same found found name so that you don't have to change the coding inside the interactive okay then uh okay so to how do you test so always use the live model 
Okay, or you can actually click on the button later. Uh, there's a button, I think it's a green arrow button that you can click that will launch it out to the full uh, browser tab. And then that you can move, you can do more accurate testing. Okay, whether you can deploy this and use this, I think I think if you can, if you know how to click download, I think the file is already in your computer. It is simply a matter of uploading it to SLS and then you can uh, test it as a media in SLS. And then that, that's it. You have essentially taken somebody else's template, customize it to your own subject discipline, and then it becomes like a, like a media you can use uh, in SLS. Okay. Of course, you have to do through, go through the usual uh, RMS and all that. Lah. But that's beyond the scope of what I'm sharing about. My, my scope is to give you a very easy way to make changes to an existing game. And then you can readily deploy it. Uh, if you're interested, you could probably do it in, you know, in less than half a day. Simplified um, for the ease of sharing. So you can see that, that these are the further resources. When you click on this, uh, you can see that there is... Um, all these interactive, they were done by the 30 uh, participants who came for the workshop. So they took five days. Uh, what I did was only 15 minutes. So uh, essentially, I took one of the examples here and then I repurposed it uh, to show you how easy or how difficult it can be to create your own simple uh, game for your own subject using an ex existing template. Lah. Oh, so, uh, and then the other resource, this is the other resource, uh, which is like um, a tutorial of sorts to show you how you can uh, use ChatGPT. You know, you can use ChatGPT, you talk to ChatGPT, you ask it for the code. Then you slowly paste inside EJS. And then you make sure that when, when EJS, this is to do from brand new, lah, so it's a bit difficult. So um, maybe if you're really interested, then you look at this tutorial. But this tutorial is very useful. It can give you a very good overview of how to do it. Okay. Then I think that's it. I think uh, let's have some Q&A then. Yeah.